Hello, I'm Lisa Bien, and welcome to Bouncing Back. Social media has changed the way that people experience the world. It has almost literally made the world smaller. We can communicate our stories to friends and others in seconds, whereas in the past we could easily lose contact if people didn't put the extra effort forward. Now we can become good friends with people far away and who would never otherwise we would never otherwise meet. Some people find dates on social media and they even get married, but social media has a downside. It follows us everywhere. If a person tells a bad joke on a social network at the wrong time, someone could share it, it could go viral, and they could lose their career. 20 years ago, cyberbullying didn't exist. Now bullies can follow us everywhere we go. Being safe on social media is now a life skill. Bouncing back on social media is something we need to practice daily. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Lisa Vienne, and welcome to Bouncing Back. That makes a way. <laughs> Be honest and communicate. Be your authentic self. That's yeah. so critical. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Bouncing Back. First, let's welcome our guest. Hynia Sharp Brown is a graduate of Temple University with a BA in journalism and love social media. She has experience in diverse communication disciplines, including national and local and state politics, education within prisons, a diversified opportunities for black journalists and women in media. And she supports adult learners and non-traditional students, a strong advocate of the community empowerment. She works tirelessly to serve communities and has won numerous awards, including 2016 Women of Destiny and one of STEM Fortune 30s under 30. Well, it's a pleasure to have you today. Pleasure. Now let's introduce our next guest. Dr. Lewis, Dr. Kate Nolt is an exercise psychologist who has worked in public health and kinesiology for over 12 years. She's been teaching at numerous universities, including Temple, for more than 11 of those years in both graduate and undergraduate programs. She's an author and a, pub and a public speaker for public health, psychology, and health promotion. Dr. Nolt, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. First of all, your name is fabulous. Thank you. Can you tell us the origins of your name, just because I want everybody on the show to hear it. It's an Arabic name and it means happy. Well, it describes me perfectly. It does <laughs> describe you perfectly because, interestingly enough, you and I formed a friendship on, on Facebook, yes. right? We had met a few years ago briefly, yes. as I think that most people do. They meet somebody briefly mm -hmm. for a minute right. or two, yes. and they become best friends on social media. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I know you. So. Thank you for having me. I mean, thanks for joining and thank you for coming. So our topic today is social media and we go right into it with Facebook, Twitter. We're all addicted. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's this addiction about? It is it is uh, very difficult to um, not want to check your phone and check your there's this sense of anticipation. Mm -hmm. There's this sense of <clears throat> we need to listen for that next text and listen for that next email and and it, it is addicting it's, we, it, but you love it's it hard to live without it, it's it's it's, it's, def, it's that's, a, that's an excellent point it's very hard to live without social media in today's environment we yeah. all are part of it we all have to embrace it in one capacity or another yeah. whether it's for business purposes LinkedIn or whether it's for social purposes yes. you use it for business correct yes i use it for business and i think both personally <coughs> and professionally it keeps you in a loop i mean personally like you said it gives you an opportunity to just stay connected with family and friends and people you haven't seen in a long time but then professionally you can use it for story leads you can use it for networking you know you can use it to promote different things that you're involved in or, or promote other people's work so it, it, it really all depends on how you utilize social media pro or con have you I think that's true of, of, of anything, right? Mm -hmm. So how we use something and the degree to which we use it, right? Yes, absolutely. Really can make a difference in the quality of our day, right? And so when if we're does doing it become healthy versus not healthy? Would you? Is so that what you're I think, I, yeah, I think there. I think, and of course, this is degrees, and it's different for for everyone, everyone. right? So I think when you find yourself not able to meet your daily tasks and you know, meet your goals in general, I think then you're sort of finding yourself um, uh, 
I don't want to use the word addiction necessarily, but do, do, do you have a, uh, you need, a, there's a level that's keeping you from doing what you need to do. And yeah. I think that be, that's when it becomes that, that boundary. How do you treat that, that though? Because what's interesting is you like it for business. So mm -hmm. you're on it for business as, as well as mm -hmm. I am. And yeah. I, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Right. And what's interesting though is I'm accused often <laughs> often of being in my face in my phone too much, yeah. especially mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, I will admit sometimes with my friends and my family, you yeah. know, and, and my s I, I have a 13 year old son and I said to him one day, that's it, cell phone free zone. Yeah. And he said, well, that goes for you too. Absolutely. But how do you balance it for work and social? Because you and I really do use it for work, you know? I mean, you have to set boundaries. Like I have designated time, especially during work hours where, you know, I know that I have to spend time checking social media, checking major news outlets, checking other professionals that I follow, depending on what I have going on during the day. But I don't spend all day staring at my phone. But you just said something that was really important. You said, I have set times for which I check social media, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So yes. walk me through your set times. So I usually en route to my office in the morning, You're I'm not already- driving. No, 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 no. <laughs> I <laughs> I catch the train. Do not want any no, driving and driving. no, no, no. I catch the train um, into the city. So typically on my train ride, I'm going through, you know, different social media platforms to kind of see what I missed last night, you know, checking in with my friends to kind of see what they were doing. Uh, and then once I get in the office, I kind of already have like a clear idea, but I have alerts set up for, you know, certain things that I follow. And so it I don't have to be technically glued to the screen or glued to my phone all day because if it's things that I'm looking for, things that I'm following or things that I'm working on, I can set up alerts for that. So, you know, and it's hard to set boundaries because I'm guilty of, you know, being in my phone. When I get home, I try to check out because I have kids and they're looking like, well, hey mom, what are you doing? So you've created boundaries for yeah. yourself, yeah. basically. And I think, it, I think that's really important because we have to have our media free time. Mm -hmm. We have to have our media free zones and respecting those. I mean, I think it becomes an exercise in being aware of ourselves and creating our daily space that that doesn't include electronics, which is very, very hard, particularly for um, the millennials who are growing up for this. So for us, we, you know, we may have grown up during a time where this, as you, met, as you mentioned in your introduction, that you know cyberbullying didn't exist 20 years ago and, and so and neither did you know the cell phones and and either the that's right so i think technology. what happens is and i was going to raise that point is that we talk about our cell phone we talk about social media but i think we in that lump we have mm -hmm. to put our cell phones because mm -hmm. you know my excuse is when i'm not paying attention or something i'll say oh, i have to answer an email yeah. because now there's an expectation that if i get an email at nine o'clock at night from my boss I'm going to answer that email. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he put that expectation yeah. on me, but Correct. I've created that mindset for myself where if someone's going to email me, if you guys email me at nine o'clock at night or text me, I'm calling you right, I'm, I'm doing it right back, yeah. uh, right now. And, well, so those, and I think that's <laughs> a part of like the boundaries that you, you know, you set for yourself, you know, because some people may get an email that late and just say, you know what, I'm going to wait until the morning. Or what I do sometimes is, I don't know, I'm conscious of the timestamps when I send emails sometimes depending on what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the email or response in my drafts. And so first thing I do in the morning is just press send. That way I don't forget that I need to reply to that person. Well, there's also this sense of That's when, a we, great idea, when we way. respond. <laughs> <laughs> when we respond to text late and email late, there's also this sense of I'm going to have less to do tomorrow. I'm just going to do it true. now. I'm just going to do it real quickly because I don't know what's coming down the pike. That is we have this true. anticipation that we're going to be so busy tomorrow that this can't wait. That's and true. it only takes a second to do, so why not do it? Yeah, I would agree with you for yes. certain, certain things, but it's interesting that you have the capability to draft your email and then put it in your box ready to go out. <coughs> I don't I feel like if I send you an email as, and you I mean, you and I work together and and I send and you send it to me at 9 a.m. let's pretend mm -hmm. if you don't get an answer by 10 it's like what's going on like mm -hmm. it's almost like if we're not responsive quickly then we're not m doing our job but we are you yeah, know what I mean we are all doing our job and that's that's the sense of anticipation I was referring to earlier which is that we anticipate that we're gonna get responses very quickly. And when we don't, um, it presents this sense of, oh gosh, I wonder what she's doing, or oh gosh, I wonder, you know, 
am I going to get a response in time? And so I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I think that applies to, I don't know, you know, if you follow social media a lot, you see now with certain stories, a lot of news outlets are in a hurry to just get it out first mm -hmm. when they're not actually checking the facts or checking the entire story. So that's a part of that anticipation too, but I think from a communications PR and journalism perspective, like you have to be way more careful when you're anticipating because you want to get it out first or you want to check it first. Um, and again, I, I think it just goes back to boundaries and what works for you too. You know, I'm, I have responded to emails at late, but I, but I try my best to not do it because once I reply, then the person's like, okay, well, they're up, they're paying attention. And then I also don't want to get in the habit of people thinking, well, she's up at 10, 11 o'clock at night replying to emails. That, that happens, doesn't you know? that happen a lot? <laughs> and it happens a lot, you when, know? When you, it, and in academia, does. it happens as well. When yeah. you're a professor, uh, students sometimes, uh, I teach online as well as, um, you know, in a brick and mortar institution, including Temple. Um, and wait a second. Let's just take a moment here to say "Go Owls" because Go we are Owls, all yeah. owls. <laughs> Temple yeah. Alum. Temple yes. Made, yes, yes, yes. Temple Made. You see, yes. you're marketing. I love it. <laughs> but I also have to say, I teach at Westchester University, so that's important too. Go Rams. Um, so <laughs> you notice you didn't get a go. There. <laughs> <laughs> just, go. just saying. Um, so, so <clears throat> what I wanted to to say is that w with students, I mean, the same kind of thing happens with students, mm -hmm. and that is that. When they email me or text me at night, um, there is this sense of, um, you know, if, if I respond right away, is the expectation now set up that I'm going to be available to my students 24-7? Yes. And so that, that is a with boundary that has to be set. With students, I do create the boundaries. Now, we could sit here and talk all day yes. about social media is uh, the good. So we, we, we spend some time talking about the good and, yes. and, and we're, I guess what we're doing now is like talking about some frustrations that we feel based around you know social media let's you know the, the social media the cell phones the smartphones they have changed the way that we live absolutely mm -hmm. they have changed the way that we communicate and it's not going away so mm -hmm. what do we do how, so you gave us one idea create boundaries you've created boundaries but how about for someone who's watching the show and says you know I feel like I'm addicted is there such thing as social media addiction I mean I, I think it is um, the bottom line is it's 2017 so our engagement with smartphones and social media is not going to change it's only going to just increase as technology and innovation increases um, and so I don't know if there's a way to just again boundaries if it's a way for people to kind of just step aside and say, you know, maybe I'm going to put my phone down for a minute because we're walking around with many computers in our hand. And it just it makes life easier and appointments. You got apps and it's not always social media. But then like we talked about, there are cons to it as well. Um, particularly, I know with me working in PR and communications, branding is a huge issue when you talk about social media, you know college acceptance letters get rescinded because of what you post. You don't get jobs because of what you post. And so I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, it's my, my personal page. No, it's the internet. There's nothing personal yeah. about it. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, like, hello. There's nothing personal Note about it. Note to who everybody's watching. I always yes. tell my students, listen, if you don't want to see it on the front page mm -hmm. of the New York Times, then please don't post it on anywhere. And just the other day, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw one of my former students holding up a beer, you know, and, and she's sitting there on her Facebook page drinking a beer. She just graduated. Yeah. So a future employer is going to go look at that and yeah. say, well, I don't know, is she responsible on social media? Is this the type of person I want to work, mm -hmm. work on my show? I mean, work on my, you know, uh, yeah. my job, my position. These are things that we really need to pay attention to because social media is just not going away. Well, and I want to yeah. I want to touch a little bit on the addiction piece. I mean, I think addiction it's, it's a, a strong, strong word. it's a strong mm -hmm. word, but I think it implies that you can't live without the technology that you can't live without or get through your day without um, checking your Facebook or checking your Twitter account or check, you know, and and I think when when an addiction is involved you you can't really function normally or some people do function normally um, but it's very difficult for them to do it so when you can't get through your day um, and meet your goals and and achieve your tasks and do your job mm -hmm. and it interferes in that way or your relationships are affected by it right mm -hmm. you want engagement from your spouse you want engagement from your kids and all you get is 
um, you know, when this is over or you get, you know, kind of, or, or, uh, when I'm done, I'll, I'll get off. Or, and yeah. and then there's always half a face there. That's when our personal relationships are affected by this. And, and, and that's, that's when it becomes a, a bigger problem. Well, um, we are going to take a break. We're going to continue our conversation about bouncing back from social media snafus we, when we come right back. So Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to <laughs> financial stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. <laughs> Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. Welcome back, and we are talking about social media snafus and bouncing back from them, and we are having a great discussion. So I just want to get right back into the conversation before our break, and we were talking about, I used the word addiction, it was a little strong, but then you brought up living without our phones, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you have, can say, I know what this happens to me, mm -hmm. you leave your phone somewhere or you don't have your phone with you for... Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the one. That, no, no, maybe no, that's why I think this happens. topic for the show. <laughs> no, I but am when, definitely. When I don't have my yeah. phone near me, I start to shake a little bit. You know, not shake, yeah. but and then what happens is, perfect example is you were trying to get in contact with me. She was trying to get in contact with me this morning before the show, and I had a I'm meeting. Well lost. <laughs> so wait, I had a meeting. So here's an interesting dynamic. I had a meeting. My cell phone was in my pocketbook because when I meet with people now, I'm very aware of mm -hmm. the level of distraction. And let's face it, it's yes. rude. Level of distraction and rudeness with our cell phones that it's become acceptable, socially acceptable. So I'm trying to like better my Set behaviors mm -hmm. I'm trying to become a better listener and mm -hmm. I don't understand how anybody can truly listen you can't listen let's face it guys you can't listen to the person that you're having a conversation with right with your cell phone next to you yeah and then you can do this uh, I'll be right back but uh, uh, I just have to I, I just have to check it real quick it's yeah. my son <laughs> Right. And, there, Help and us, there's actually please. studies. You change behaviors. Yeah. Can you change mine? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Thank we'll you. We'll work on that together. Thank you. So there are actual studies that show that you can't really multitask and get and gain the the completeness of the, the, the level of experience, the uh, real world experience, if there's so many distractions. It is a distraction. Yeah. Um, and so we, what we can do is, is we can shift our priorities. In, in our day. We can literally make a list of the tasks and make a list of the goals that we have. And oh, the joy in crossing off, you know, on that list the things that we've actually accomplished and, and avoid the distraction of our phones and of the, f you know, the whatever other apps we have open at the same uh. time. And, and it really helps to write a list of things that you want to accomplish, whether it's in a day or in a week. And, and or goals that you have and just shift the priority um, from to that and from away from the it's a it's a skill it's you it's, have to actually it do is. that. and when you talk about you know if you don't have your phone next to you I can remember forgetting my phone um, and multiple times <laughs> when I've gone out on family outings and then come to find out it was for the best that I actually forgot my phone because then you're more engaged yes. and so 
you know, I know people don't purposely leave it and I get the anxiety, especially for someone who use it, uses it as a part of their job every day. Right. It's like, oh my God, I left my phone, what am I gonna do? Uh, I have to turn back around and get it. But sometimes it is a good thing to just disconnect. It is a good thing to disconnect. Yeah, I sometimes agree. it's a good thing to just disconnect. Well, because it allows us to focus more on ourselves and how we're doing and, and what we've actually accomplished when we don't have the distraction so that we can, you know, we can, we can, when we disconnect completely, we can be present. We can be present. We can start utilizing the skills that we're underusing, underutilizing, such as communication skills. We can do things like check the body language of the person we're in the, you know, having a conversation with, well, the smiles, <laughs> and, you know. Well, I think personally for me, I just know like even text messaging is out. I admit I don't like to, I don't like to talk on the phone because by the end of the day, you know, I'm talking to so many different people yeah. or whatever. So I do like to text, but people are turning text messaging into war and peace. Like a yes. text message is designed to say, um, well, in my opinion, anyway, I'm late. I'm on my way. I'm, I'm late. Like, I'm on my way. I'll I'm be lost. here. <laughs> I'm lost. Because what happens? She's never gonna let me live that one down, folks. <laughs> what happens is when you, <laughs> sorry. No, no. When no, you get um, when I you had get to throw caught that in up there. in the text messaging. I think the thing that always comes up for me is tone. And so depending on what you're discussing via text message, that can be a huge problem that can just go completely left um, when you don't just interact either in face to face mm -hmm. or just pick up the phone and call. And so I, I like to text, but sometimes it really just requires you to pick up the phone because you, you can't interpret what people are saying or how they're saying it via text message. And I agree with you and I also, I think nothing will ever replace, in my opinion, nothing should ever replace this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good old fashioned you. conversation. Yes. Because mm -hmm. what happens is that when there's a communication breakdown, we tend to what? When Shut there's a communication mm -hmm. big breakdown, that's 90% of the problems in the world yeah. is because it's, it's people who aren't communicating properly mm -hmm. with each other and they're not taking the time. And so now I think we're just faced with so many distractions that you're right, we have to, sometimes a good old fashioned phone call can make all the difference in the world, mm -hmm. right? And, and what's difficult about that part is that our leaders, right, the people that we are public um, figures and role models also use social, social media, media to in order to promote, masses, right, yes. to, to promote their, their, their jobs or, you know, what their philosophy is or their politics. And, um, and, and because it's all in 140, 140 <laughs> characters, yes. you it's know, it's, it's kind of hard, right? It's kind of hard, really to, hard. Yeah. to really get a sense. And so we build our impressions on the, those 140 characters yeah. and we form our opinions and we start judging. And so that is, again, part of the loss in communication and underutilizing our social skills. We're social creatures. We should be engaging personally with each other because that's how we actually start to begin layering our, our experiences, our real world experiences. And social media is not a real world experience in terms of how we, it's like that eat, pray, love thing. We, we need to be able to go out and engage our senses, you know, smell it and taste it and feel I it. I mean, but I think it is for a lot of people now, their real world experience. But it's, it's their real world experience, but with a little bit of sugar coating and, see that's what concerns me when we say it's a real world experience. I'm just gonna play devil's advocate mm -hmm. here because I don't think there's anything real world about Instagram. We'll take, I'm gonna pick on Instagram, okay? Sorry guys, but there are so many filters and so many things that we can look like, you know, I could take a picture of myself and make me look like, a, 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 you know, a glamour girl mm -hmm. just using the filter on Instagram. So that to me isn't real world. Mm -hmm. You know, for the folks that are out maybe taking videos or go live and they're on a fabulous vacation, that's a real world experience. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of psychology that goes into <coughs> that because for me, I know personally, like when I'm on Facebook, I get depressed sometimes because I'm like, oh, everybody in the world is on a vacation. But <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Why you, is everybody yes, away but so me? <laughs> like, and, and then you hear people say, and I do this, they'll yeah. say, I had a Facebook break. And I've done that before where yeah. I won't go on Facebook for a while. And then people will say to me, where have you been? You okay? You been? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that because what happens is is that um, you start to self compare with what you see all of your friends doing and, and you can become lonely and depressed and actually envy in some cases 
what everyone else is doing that you're not. It's a reminder in some ways. If you like children and you see that all of your, your pe friends are having grandchildren or, you know, and you couldn't have kids. So, so you know, maybe you get a little sad, you get lonely. I think a Mother's Day and sometimes. When we, every Mother's Day has become a ritual. Happy Mother's Day and yeah. you have, yeah. you know, or Father's Day yeah. or any day. You know, mm -hmm. Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas. I love Christmas. Yeah. You know, I love Christmas, but I don't celebrate Christmas. It's we wish you a Merry Christmas. You know, it's just like then I feel like I got to do that post, you know, yeah. sometimes you just feel like it's expected. So now I don't do those posts like, well, there is a way to kind of overcome this a little bit, like to regain some balance. And that would be to um, to build a get make friends outside of social media. Make sure that you are building a social network because people who have these this social network and in, in, uh, personally in a net that to support when you do hit adverse times in your life which we all do mm -hmm. you know death divorce whatever I anything negative that can happen or even the positive things it's great to know that you've got somebody that'll show up at your house <laughs> with some soup and some casserole or something or at least just to sit with you over some tea and talk to you and you know to have that community that that it takes a village right to to heal and to raise and and so we we've lost kind of or we're underutilizing that so making friends off of social media is another thing that we can do to um, to ensure that we have a strong social network and also I would say that helping other people also helps you but I think yeah. social media allows you in a sense to not have to uh, make friends with people outside of the social network that I mean that's essentially what social media is mm -hmm. and then going back to your point about like the filters and Instagram I think it also goes back to what you utilize it for and so I hear like a lot of kids yeah. that are younger than me um, or a lot of some professionals I know, you know, they have this term, do it for the gram. And so you do have a lot of people. Do it for the what? Do, do it, it for, for the, the gram, gram, which is Instagram. Oh, and I so know. you have a lot of people who are doing it for the gram where right. there is a, um, an authentic thing that's happening mm -hmm. with social media. And you have people looking and thinking like, oh, I should be doing this. But it's not necessarily what that person is actually doing. And there's, they're literally just doing it for social media. And so, um, again, I think it goes back to how you utilize social media. What do you want to use it for? Um, do you want to use it because you just want to post pictures of what you ate today? Some people like to do that, whereas some people just um, like to post about the impact work that they're doing. I think it's always going to go back to what you want to get out of it, like with any situation, what you want to get out of what you're doing with your social media. I think you are spot on with mm -hmm. that. I think that what I, the reoccurring theme that I keep hearing for our, for our conversation yeah. is that, you know, nothing's going to replace this, mm -hmm. you know, this interaction. But let's talk, you know, we have a couple minutes left and I want to make sure that everybody watching today gets the most for the show. That social media is not going away and we do have to practice some, create some boundaries and we have to understand, figure out what you want to use it for. And that you're not, you don't have to be on social media mm -hmm. either. Right? No, it is a choice. There are people who yes. just decide, I, I, I can't do this anymore, or I don't want to do this anymore, because I, I have wa other ways I want to spend my time. Um, it opens up time for self-reflection, for going to do other fun things um, that we haven't been able to do. And I think people, if people are very capable of building a strong social network. Mm -hmm. I have a, a good girlfriend who is amazing she is like one of the most amazing people i know she has a huge following and impact she is not on anything except linkedin you know yeah. that's the only social network she, she is a hashtag on other platforms um because she's not engaged in facebook twitter or instagram but she still has a very huge following and still makes a really great impact mm -hmm. not being on all of those platforms that you see everybody else on she's just on linkedin um and so again what do you what do you want um, your social media to stand for you from a brand perspective? Mm -hmm. You know, is it just for family? Is it just to stay connected with you know friends and family members, or are you utilizing it for some other kind of personal professional development? Well, we have covered so much today, yes. so I think that that's the great way and a great close right here is to say, think about your. Think about your brand. We did. We Number talk one. about that and think about why you want to use it. And also remember, you know what? A very smart woman once told me, our life is full of choices. So I want to thank you. I want to thank our guests for joining us thank and for their you. very insightful insights today about social media. It's such a powerful communications tool. And as a certain popular superhero will tell you, with great power comes great responsibility. 
when we go on social media, we have a responsibility to others to show them a degree of respect, to try to assume good faith when interacting with people. We don't know or understand that nuance can be so easily lost in a text that can be found in the body language. We, we also have a responsibility to ourselves. We need to avoid toxic communities and people. We need to take breaks when necessary, and we need to look before we leap. Bouncing back is about self-care, and that is just as true in the, in the online world as it is on the offline world. Once again, I'm Lisa Bien, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Bouncing Back. Hello, I'm Lisa Bien, and welcome to Bouncing Back. God makes a way. <laughs> Be honest and communicate. Be honest. Your authentic self, that's yeah. so critical. Thank you.